Welcome back to another video. Um, this video is going to be based around um, a sheet metal fabrication project where I'm going to be fabricating a set of drawers uh, for the Myford lathe stand. And um, <clears throat> I got this idea when I was watching a video on NYCNC um, where there was a, a tour of um, TA crafted um, his workshop and he has a lathe similar configuration in that um, it's a lathe stand with a, an open space uh, in the stand for, to for storing tools and such uh, but he's um, he showed uh, a set of drawers that he had had fabricated and then he'd welded and painted and installed into his machine and I thought that's a, a really good idea um, so I'm going to be fabricating some uh, of my own and um, <clears throat> My intention is to design it so that um, I don't need to make any permanent modifications to the machine so that I can um, revert back to the standard um, machine whenever I need to. Uh, I will need to drill some holes into the stand but um, that's not uh, a massive deal. Um, so. <clears throat> The, the kind of things that I want to store in there, because it's such a, a big space, it's not really a very uh, useful use of the space. So um, so when I have things like um, my chucks in there, my collet chuck, my magnetic chuck, three and four jaw chucks, and um, it's just really, I mean, they only take up probably 100 millimetres in height on the shelf, and then there's all that space going to waste. Um, so there's plenty of stuff that I can use uh, that storage for. So I'll just pick you up and show you an example. So um, I've got my some of my uh, lathe tool holders there. So they're the most commonly used ones up on the shelf there. Um, so what I would do is I'd have a drawer um, down here. Um, so I'd, I'd have my uh, turning tools here, um, whereas I've got some there in, in holders. I've got some in my toolbox here. So I've got odd bits of turning tools here, uh, sensor drills and things like that that I use um, quite commonly. Um, so I can keep them all consolidated in one place. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give you a little um, outline of, of how I'm planning to make the drawers. Um, they're going to be fabricated from um, 0.9 millimeter Zintec sheet. Um, and then um, once it's all assembled, um, I'll, I'll paint it uh, probably like a charcoal gray. Um, so that's the plan for this video. Okay, so I've removed the side panels from the lathe now. Um, they weren't fixed in place, they were just sitting there under their own weight. Um, but now hopefully we can see in a bit more detail how I've constructed these and um, and I'll explain some of the reasons why I've made them the way I have. Okay, so um, first of all the, the draw sliders. So these are ball bearing sliders um, and as you can see in here hopefully you can see that they're pop riveted to the side here. These are um, 4.8 millimeter um, aluminium rivets and there's four per slide. Um, so, so they'll they'll run nicely. They they they're quite good for load bearing. These are and um, <clears throat> and the the construction of the slider itself offers some stiffness to this side panel as well, which is good, um, so that the side isn't flexing. Um, the side panel is made from uh, 0.9 millimeter uh, Zintec steel. Um, so I've I folded the sheet here. I've put two folds in here, um, so we've got like a, a double ninety degree bend here. Um, and the reason for that is um, because this is the back side. So if, if you can imagine, that's um, sitting in the back end of the cabinet. And what I wanted to do was have stiffness um, to add some stiffness to the sheet in this direction here. Um, and if I just put a single 90 degree bend into it, then potentially um, it could still flex and kink the, 
kink this bench section here. So I put the double bend on, um, so it adds a lot more rigidity to that. So that is really nice and stiff now. So it's it's so it's now got good stiffness in in two planes, which is good. Um, this bend here, um, I haven't put this on for the purpose of adding rigidity. This is purely as a means to retain it into position on in the lathe stand. So that's the side panel. Um, that's the right hand side. That's this is the front edge, which I probably should have said in the first place, but but. Uh, Along here is where I'll fix it to the machine, um, and I'll and I'll fix it to the back here and along here. Um, this side panel, this is the left-hand side panel. Um, as you can see, I'm yet to put these two draw sliders in, so I'll be doing that in a minute, and I'll show you how I'm doing that with the with the rivet gun. Um, it's all pre-drilled. Um, oh, incidentally, um, I'll I'll show a picture here. Um, somewhere where I actually clamp these two parts back to back <clears throat> like this so you, you can see the rivets sticking through there um, so I clamp these rivets uh, sorry these panels back to back um, and then drill through uh, all of these holes so that um, the holes match up on both sides it's not less it's not that critical but um, what what I want to achieve is that on both left hand and right hand sides these um, there's like a closing um, piece here it's like a rubber pad that kind of is a uh, interference fit with this section on the slide here what I want is both left and right sides to engage in that at the same time I don't want it to kind of crab or anything I want the draw to come straight in straight out and lock equally uh, on both sides um, so that's why I've done it that way. Um, so the next task is to um, to rivet the next two sliders onto there, and then I'll explain how I'm going to construct the drawers themselves, the draw boxes. Okay, coming up next is going to be a time lapse time lapse video of me um, fixing or riveting these side um, these rails onto the side panel. Um, I just quickly want to explain the reason why I'm using the holes I'm using. There's a number of holes on here that I could use to fix it in place. I'm going to use the end holes on these little flexure tabs here. And the reason for that is that it offers me a degree of um, flexibility and compliance. Um, so if there's any dimensional error in the width of the drawers, um, then this will compensate for that. Um, so what I will do is make sure that the drawers are either bang on size or slightly uh, undersized for width by up to maybe a couple of millimetres. Hopefully I can make them that accurately, we'll see. Um, but anyway, that's why I'm using those holes um, for that reason. So coming next should be a time lapse. Okay, so they're all riveted in place now, so I'll just check that they uh, slide okay, so that's good. Uh, the rivet heads are not uh, fouling in any way, so that's good. Same with this one, that works fine, that's good. Uh, I'll just check that it's um, somewhere near square. It's not too bad. Yeah, that looks okay. Great. So that's two side panels done. Um, and uh, so now uh, we'll go and talk about the uh, draw boxes. So in between the width of the um, of the draw slides, each side. Um, so if I if I just draw that uh, roughly here, um, let's say it's something like that, and then there's ball races in the middle there which I won't draw in detail um, and if I just draw it shorter than it actually is just to fit it into a handy little sketch in here so if that's the bearing cages in there so in between the inner slides if you like 
in erases or slides. Um, that's 460 millimetres. And it's that distance between there and there, which is where I need my draw width to fit in nicely. And I'm going to design the draw so it's, the sides are going to be nice and stiff. Um, and you'll see when I make it, um, you'll see in more detail then. But um, that's how it's going to fit. So if I draw the front of the, of the draw box in oblique, like this, um, I'm having to, this is all freehand obviously, so it's rough as you like, but it's just to illustrate what I'm talking about. Um, the width of the runner from there to there is half inch, so 12.7 millimetres. Um, so what I'm going to do, as I showed you with the side panel, is I'm going to draw, sorry, I'm going to um, make a stiffener onto the top. So there'll be like a double lip here and here, and there'll be one there as well. And I'll make that, that'll be 10 by 10 millimetres, so that it doesn't clash with the side panel, uh, which would be there and there. Uh, because it's 12.5, I'll have, well, nominally 2.7 millimetres clearance. So that's where the side panel would go, like that, inside the lathe stand. And then that's where the, uh, the draw slide would be, something like that. Okay, rough sketch, I know. Okay, so I'm going to make the main section of the draw out of one piece of sheet. So there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six bends. Um, the overall width of that will be, as I said, over there. That will be for 60, as per that. Um, and then there'll be three drawers on the in the unit. And there'll be a front panel to go onto here as well. And the front panel is going to be... Um, the front panel is going to be 100 millimetres on the top one. And then the... Um, the next two will be 135 each and then so that will take me to here kind of thing so I'll have three drawers um, and uh, on the side of the front of each drawer so if I if I just draw the the side of the the side view of the drawer front there'll be just a little folded lip like that with a safety edge where this will double back on itself like that so I don't cut my fingers on there um, so that's the overall concept um, I'm not going to bore you with any more detail other than that um, the rest of it you'll see as I'm making the panels and I'll explain um, why I'm doing what I'm doing as we go okay okay so um, I've just made this little um, uh, test piece really just to illustrate um, what I was talking about earlier. So, um, so here's a scaled down version of the of the draw box itself. Um, so we've got the two sides, the bottom, um, and the and the two uh, folded sections at the top. Um, I made a mistake. Um, the, I should have flipped the sheets over before making these two bends because I've put these on the inside, and I, and I don't want them on the inside. I want them on the outside. I don't want to be reaching in here and catching my hand on the edge of there or anything. Um, so that'll be on the outside um, and it'll actually cover the rails as well so you won't see the rails either side um, and then what I'll do is I'll be making a front panel uh, to go on the front here uh, which will also uh, encompass the handle um, to open and close it uh, and then there'll be a back panel as well um, so, um, so the next uh, video you see will be the actual drawers being made and those panels going on and then fitting into the uh, into the overall assembly